The following audio is a translation to the English language from a volunteer. The one who speaks is your servant, Dr. Javier Palacio Celorio, Minister of the Kehila, the Congregation, Hanabe Shalom, Joy and Peace, headquartered from the city of Tehuacan in Puebla, Mexico. We invite you, your family and friends to visit us online at www.joyandpeace.us. There you'll find study materials that you can download, copy, and give away for free. Here at our Kehila, our congregation, we do not do business with the word of our Elohim, our Creator. Do it and do it quickly because time is running out. This study is extremely important. It is titled, The Two Houses of Israel. This is a very important topic because it has to do with the restoration, the final restoration in these last days. Many people have no idea that there are two houses of Israel in existence today. It all started with King Solomon, or Melech Shlomo as it is pronounced in Hebrew. King Solomon did not keep the covenant that Yahweh had made with him. As a result, there were consequences. Go ahead and turn your Tanakh, your Bible, to the book of Deuteronomy on chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 16 and 17, it reads, but he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. For Yahweh has said to you, You shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turn away. Nor shall he greatly multiply silver and gold for himself. King Solomon did not keep Yahweh's covenant. He didn't do what he was told to do by our Heavenly Father, and there were consequences as a result of this. Let's go to 1 Kings, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 10, verses 27 and 28. Here it reads, The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. Also Solomon, Shlomo, had horses imported from Egypt and Keveh, the king's merchants bought them in Keveh at the current price. As we can see, King Solomon did not keep Yahweh's covenant. In the book of 1 Kings, on chapter 11, verses 1 through 13, we can see more evidence of this when it says, But King Solomon, Melech Shlomo, loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, Edomites, Sidamites and Hittites from the nations of whom Yahweh said to the children of Israel you shall not intermarry with them nor they with you surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods Solomon clung to these in love and he had 700 wives princesses and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart for it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to Adonai, his Elohim, as was the heart of his father David. On verse 9 it says, So Adonai became angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned away from the Elohim of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what Adonai had commanded. Now, verse 11 is very important. It says, Therefore Yahweh said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you, and give it to your servant. Here's where the kingdom is split into two. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days, for the sake of your father David. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom, I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem which I have chosen. This is the decree of Yahweh where he split up the kingdom. Now Jeroboam, Jeroboam rebelled against Solomon. Jeroboam comes from Ephraim, son of Yosef, son of Jacob, Jacob, because Jacob adopted the sons of Yosef. Let's go to Genesis on chapter 48 verse 5. On Genesis chapter 48 verse 5 it reads, and now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simon, they shall be mine. On verse 17, Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him so that he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head 
to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. He is referring here to Ephraim. Ephraim is the house of Israel. On verse 20 it says, So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will bless, saying, May Yahweh make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. And thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. If you've heard this prayer before, you're not alone. This is the prayer that we perform on every Shabbat to bless the children. It is the blessing of the children. May Yahweh make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 26, Jeroboam rebelled against Solomon. Jeroboam came from Ephraim. Ephraim is what is known as the house of Israel. Ephraim became a multitude of nations from what we just read in Genesis chapter 48 in Bereshiz 48. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 26 through 31 it reads, Then Solomon's servant Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite from Zerida, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also rebelled against the king. And this is what caused him to rebel against the king. Solomon Shlomo had built the Milo and repaired the damage to the city of his father David. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing that the young man was industrious, made him the officer over all the labor force of the house of Joseph, Joseph which is the house of Israel. On verse 29 it says, Now it happened at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Aijah the Shilonite met him on the way, and he had clothed himself with a new garment, a talit, and the two were alone in the field. And Ahijah took hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says Yahweh the Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. As you can see, here is the division of the kingdom, and it is done by the hand of the Almighty Himself, Yahweh, not by the hand of mortal man. Yahweh Himself ordered the division through the prophet Haijah and with the power of the Ruach HaKodesh in his life. These ten tribes, these other ten tribes of the house of Israel would go on to become many nations and many peoples and many tongues. Therefore, you, me, most people in your community come from these ten tribes of Israel. Jeroboam caused the Israelites to sin. He made two golden calves and changed the date of the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Sukkot. He changed it to mid-October. And this is where it all started. Here is a perfect example of what is going on today and what has been going on for a long time. Mortal man always thinks that they can come in and change dates and times that have already been established by our Heavenly Father. Mortal man has made their own celebrations, their own feasts, their own holidays, and their own commandments. But these holidays, these man-made feasts, do not belong to Yahweh. This is why we must only guard ourselves by the Holy Tanakh, the Holy Bible, Torah, and not to man-made or pagan traditions. Here is where idol worship begins to take place by the house of Israel. In the book of 1 Kings on chapter 12, idol worship begins to take place by the house of Israel. And while many popular religions in the world today have not yet been born or come into existence, this is where it all got started. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 25, the Tanakh reads, Then Jeroboam built Sakim in the mountains of Ephraim, and dwelt there. Also he went out from there and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom may return to the house of David, if these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of Yahweh in Jerusalem. Then the heart of these people will return back to their Lord, Rehoboam, the king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam, the king of Judah, back to Jerusalem. Therefore the king asked advice, made two calves of gold, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, 
which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And he set one up in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. On verse 30 it says, Now this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one as far as Dan. He made shrines on high places, and made priests, made Kohanim, from every class of people who were not of the sons of Levi, because remember, only the Levites were allowed to be Kohanim or priests, according to the Holy Torah. Jeroboam ordained a feast on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the feast that was in Judah. Remember, according to the Holy Torah in Leviticus chapter 23, the feast is on the 7th month, not on the 8th month. But here, Jeroboam does more damage when he offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did at Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made. On verse 33 it says, So he made offerings on the altar, which he had made at Bethel, on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, in the month which he had devised in his own heart. It was a man-made feast, just like the religions of the world today. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel, and offered sacrifices on the altar, and burned incense. What might have Jeroboam been thinking? What could Jeroboam been thinking when he had done this? Could it be that the children of Israel could go back to Jerusalem, to their true king, Jeroboam, the king of Judah? Well, I better do something quick before they leave and before they figure out what's going on. I know, I'm going to make our own gods right here. And then I'm going to make them think it's okay to worship these false gods. I'm going to make our own feasts, just like the ones that they had in Jerusalem. And the best part is, they won't even know the difference. And we'll make them pay for worshipping these golden calves. Hey, why not? We know the tithes only belong to the Kohanim, the priests at the temple. But hey, we'll just do it anyway. It was all man-made worship. It was man-made. It was not according to the Holy Torah. This is where all worship outside of the Torah came from. It was man-made. It was devised from his own heart, as it says. Now we're going to see what happens as a result of these sins, these transgressions to the Holy Torah. Because remember, where there is sin, there is always judgment from our Heavenly Father Yahweh. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 14, verses 15 and 16 it says, For Yahweh will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land which he gave to their fathers and will scatter from beyond the river, because they have made their wooden images provoking Yahweh to anger. And he will give Israel up of the sins of Jeroboam, who sinned and who made Israel sin. This is how the twelve tribes of Israel were split up. They were split up into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern kingdom of Israel, which consisted of the ten tribes that were with Jeroboam, was unfaithful, they sinned. And the southern kingdom of Judah remained faithful and consisted of the remaining two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. A part of the Levites, the Kohanim, also stayed with the southern kingdom of Judah. As a result of all of this, judgment came shortly thereafter. Let's go to the book of Hosea on chapter 2 verse 11. In Hosea chapter 2 verse 11 it reads, I will also cause all their mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, all her appointed feasts. Here Yahweh takes away all the feasts, the Sabbaths, the new moons. He took away the Torah and in time the remaining ten tribes of the north completely forgot about the Holy Torah. In the book of Hosea in chapter 4 verse 6 it reads, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priest or kwanim to me. Because you have forgotten the Torah of your Elohim, I also will forget your children. Yahweh not only took away the Torah from the house of Israel, He also rejected them from being kwanim or priest to Himself. In Hosea chapter 7 verse 8 it reads, Ephraim, or the house of Israel, has mixed himself among the peoples, Ephraim is a cake unturned. In the book of Hosea, on chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, it reads, Set the shofar to your mouth. He shall come like an eagle against the house of Yahweh, because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my Torah. Israel will cry to me, My Elohim, we know you. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. Any person who rejects the Torah is also rejected by Yahweh, as we can see. And Yahweh allows the enemy to pursue them. And the enemy is Hasatan, or Satan. May Yahshua HaMashiach rebuke him. 
Aside from everything that has been ministered, the Holy Torah was considered a strange thing to the house of Israel. And that is exactly what is going on today on a global scale. The Holy Torah seems like a strange thing to most people. Most people do not keep the feast of Yahweh, His Shabbat, His covenants, His commandments, etc. How can we prove this? In the book of Hosea on chapter 8 verse 12 it says, I have written for him the great things of my Torah. But they were considered a strange thing. This is exactly what happened to Christianity. They do not recognize the Holy Torah. It is considered strange to them. The house of Israel, Ephraim, rejected the Holy Torah. And in return, Yahweh has given them up to be pursued by the enemy and eat unclean things. True B'nai Israel or children of Israel do not eat unclean things. We eat kosher as Yahweh instructed in the book of Leviticus chapter 11. Therefore, someone who is truly keeping the Torah eats only kosher. And this has to do with the parable of the prodigal son. When Yahshua HaMashiach was ministering that there was two sons, the older son Judah and the younger son Israel or Ephraim, the younger son ended up being with pigs. It was prophesied and Judah would remain faithful. In the book of Hosea on chapter 9 verse 3 it reads, They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and shall eat unclean things in Assyria. In Hosea chapter 11 verse 12 it says, Ephraim has encircled me with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah still walks with Yahweh, even with the Holy One who is faithful. The house of Israel sinned against Yahweh with devil worship, worshiping Baal. In the book of Hosea on chapter 13 verse 1 it reads, When Ephraim spoke, trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended through Baal worship, he died. Now it would seem as if everything is lost for Israel, but Yahweh promises a new covenant because Yahweh is faithful after all. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 36 it reads, Behold the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah the two houses of Israel, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my Torah in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their Adonai, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, No Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. Verse 35 says, Thus says Yahweh, who gives the sun for light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who disturbs the sea and its waves roar. Yahweh is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. There has always been a faithful remnant from the house of Judah ever since those days that also believed and still believe that Yahshua is the Mashiach. Why? Because Yahweh had promised it. So there were a remnant of Jews from the house of Judah at that time that believed in the Mashiach and the Messiah, Yahshua, and kept the Holy Torah as Yahweh said there would be a remnant. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 21 verse 20. Here it reads, and when they heard it, they glorified Adonai, and they said to him, You see, brother, ach, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed in Yahshua HaMashiach, and they are all zealous of the Torah. So you see, there were Jews at that time that did believe in Yahshua HaMashiach and that kept the Holy Torah. Tradition today has always believed that the Christian church has replaced Israel or the children of Israel, but Israel is irreplaceable. Yahweh will never destroy his people. Let's go to Romans chapter 11 verses 1 through 5. In the book of Romans chapter 11 verses 1 through 5 it reads, 
I say then, has Yahweh cast away his people? Certainly not, says Rav Shaul or Paul. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahweh has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elisha? How he pleads with Yahweh against Israel saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. And I alone am left and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed to the knee of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant, a remnant according to the election of grace. So you see, according to the election of grace, according to the scriptures, there has always been a remnant, a remnant of true believers according to the election of grace. Even today, there remains a small group of people, a remnant, who have remained faithful to Yahweh, to Yahshua HaMashiach, and His Holy Torah, according to His grace. In the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 17, it says, And if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root of fatness of the olive tree. This is referring exclusively to the Gentiles. The people who are from the house of Israel are from the house of Israel. They are children of Yahweh. It is not saying that someone can be grafted in not being part of his people. The wild olive tree is referring to those who are not from the house of Judah or from the house of Israel on a global scale. But they can still be grafted in, given the proper requirements, keeping the commandments, the Shabbat, the Muadim, the feasts. Anyone from the house of Israel is also a child of Yahweh and has always been a child of Yahweh, believing in Him, of course, and obeying. Many people curse themselves, speaking vile things about, about the Jews, the people of Yahweh, saying that the Jews are bad, that they crucified Christ, that all of the world's problems are the Jews' fault, that the Jews this, that the Jews that. But according to the book of Genesis on chapter 12 verse 3, people that do these kinds of things that accuse the Jews of these vile things only curse themselves. In the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 it says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. In today's world, there are very few people who do not have Jewish blood. At least 85% of the world's population today has Jewish blood. Even if it's only one drop of blood, they have Jewish blood from the mix of peoples that has already taken place. In the book of Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 through 7, Yahweh makes a promise to Abraham, to Abraham. Yahweh makes a covenant with Abraham, the Brit Milah, the circumcision, that will last forever. Therefore, the promise that Yahweh made with King David that his people will be forever is true because Yahweh knew that in the future King Solomon would fail. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 12 through 16 it reads, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul whom I removed from before you, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 24, it reads, For you have made your people Israel your very own people forever, and you, Yahweh, have become their Elohim. Now, O Adonai Yahweh, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have said. So let your name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the Elohim over Israel. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, Elohim of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build you a house, therefore your servant has found it in his heart to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord Adonai, you are Yahweh, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness to your servant. Now therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord Elohim, have spoken it. And with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Now, 
Anyone who harasses his people is like if someone harassed the apple of his eye, the apple of Yahweh's eye. In the book of Zechariah, on chapter 2, verse 8, it reads, For thus says the Lord Adonai, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them. Certainly those who harass the Talmidin, the disciples, who persecute the Kadoshim, the saints, who destroy his work, his Torah, who put man-made laws, who curse his people, the Jews, the house of Israel, and the house of Judah, and those from the wild olive tree, who also become children of the Most High. Certainly these people that commit these vile things against his chosen people will be cursed by Yahweh. Let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter 89, verse 29. In the book of Psalm, chapter 89, verse 29, it reads, His seed I will also make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If his sons forsake my Torah and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statues and, and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Even though the house of Israel and the house of Judah sinned against Yahweh and his Torah, Yahweh promises to rebuild Israel. You can find this in the book of Jeremiah chapter 31. The promise of the descendants in the book of Hosea is very important. Israel will once again be called his people. In the book of Hosea chapter 1 verse 10 it reads, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. It shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people. There it shall be said to them, You are the sons of the living Elohim. Then the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint for themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. The key to the promise of life then is in Yahshua HaMashiach. In the awakening of the prophetic third day, which we are now living, He will call on us, His lost sheep. You can find this in the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Now. Most of the tribes, the lost tribes, went south to what is now France. You can find this in the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 20. The restoration of Israel is promised in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 21, as I mentioned in the study titled, The Torah. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 21, it says, Whom heaven must remain. Remember, it is not to receive because Yahshua HaMashiach was already in heaven at that time. Who must remain in the heavens until the restoration of all things which Adonai has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This is the restoration of the Holy Torah, misinterpreted as the law in the Bible. You can find this in the study titled, The Misinterpretation of the Torah, where we discover with the same Bible that you hold in your hands, that there are in fact two interpretations of the word law in your Bible. In other words, there are two meanings of the word law in your Bible. Also part of the restoration are the feasts, the Moadim of the Lord, that you can find in the book of Leviticus chapter 23. Included in these feasts is the weekly Shabbat or the Sabbath, and not Sunday worship or worship of the sun, followed by the seven holy feasts of Yahweh. True followers of Yahshua HaMashiach do not celebrate man-made pagan holidays such as Halloween, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, etc. These are all man-made and pagan in origin and are not according to the Holy Torah. Also part of the restoration is the Brit Milah, the circumcision, the perpetual covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham, the holy dances, the garments that the children of Israel used to worship, the lighting of the menorah, the restoration of the original language in Hebrew, the prayers in Hebrew, the invocation of the true names of Yahweh, Yahshua, and the Ruach HaKodesh, etc. The beginning of Chokhmah, of wisdom, is in the fear of Yahweh, the Almighty Living Elohim of Israel. You can find this in the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Therefore, if someone has true wisdom, true Chokhmah, they will follow Yahshua HaMashiach and his Torah. 
and they will fear Yahweh. In the book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 9, it reads, Who is wise? Let him understand these things. Who is prudent? Let him know them. For the ways of Adonai are right. The righteous walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. This means that only the righteous, the Sadiqim, walk according to the Holy Torah, but the rebellious will not believe in the Torah. The Torah is something strange to them. Yahweh allows them to keep eating garbage and transgress the Torah. Yahweh allows this to happen to them because of their unbelief, their hard hearts, their rejection of the Holy Torah. The house of Israel must return to the Father. This is what is happening right now. That feeling that some of you get that something is missing in the doctrines of Christianity. Those certain verses in your Bible and your Tanakh that no one can explain. That feeling you get when you realize that your Bible was not written in English. That those strange names that are hard to pronounce. There is a reason for all of this, I assure you. I urge you to take a second look at your Bible, at your Tanakh. And not look at your Bible through the eyes of the Roman Empire as worshippers of the sun as believers of pagan gods of mythology but take a look at your bible at your tanakh of true followers of yashua hamashiach the messiah of israel through the eyes of a hebrew and israelite as true descendants of our father abraham who became many nations as heirs of the new covenant of yahweh and our city the new jerusalem as lost sheep of the house of Israel that have been found by our Lord, Yahshua HaMashiach, because remember, He only came for the lost sheep of Israel. We urge you, with the greatest calling mankind has ever seen, with a calling that will last forever, look at your Tanakh, your Bible, through the eyes of a Hebrew. In the book of Luke on chapter 15, when you look at this through the eyes of a Hebrew, you will see that everything that is written in the Old and the New Covenants, or the Old and the New Testaments, in your Tanakh and your Bible, Absolutely everything has to do with the restoration of Israel. Absolutely everything, everything. The parable of the lost son. In the book of Luke, on chapter 15, verse 11, Yahshua HaMashiach says on verse 11, A certain man had two sons. He's talking about the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the older brother and the younger brother. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days later, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. He pretty much turned his life into idolatry. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Amazing how he mentions swine, an unclean animal. On verse 16 it says, And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. Again he mentions swine. And none gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and the bread of life is the Torah. And I perish with hunger. Verse 18 says, I will arise and go to my father's house, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe, the best robe is a tali, the holy garment, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand. Rings are always related to covenants. In this case, the covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 17. And put sandals on his feet, which he ta taught him to walk the right way, according to the Holy Torah. The Holy Torah keeps our feet from stumbling. And bring the fattened calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. On verse 24 it says, For this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found the dry bones of Ezekiel chapter 37. And they began to be merry. Now his older son, Judah, or the house of Judah, was in the field, 
And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. The seven holy feasts of Leviticus chapter 23, on verse 26 it says, So he called one of the servants, Judah, and asked what these things were. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. Judah. Judah called one of his servants and asked what, what was the meaning of this. Judah's asking, what is the meaning of this? What's all the commotion? And the servant said to him, Your brother, the house of Israel, has come. And because he has returned, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fattened calf. Verse 28 says, But he was angry and would not go in. Judah was angry. This is exactly what's happening right now. The Jews in Israel are saying, Why are these people wearing a talit? Why are they playing the shofar? Why are they lighting the menorah? What are these people doing? Why are they speaking in Hebrew? Why have they entered into the Brit Milah, the circumcision? Why do they use the seat seat and keep the Shabbat? Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. On verse 29 it says, So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. On verse 30 it says, But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, the house of Israel fornicated with the nations, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, to Judah, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. Verse 32 says, It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother, the house of Israel, was dead and is alive again and was lost and is now found. Yahweh had given the house of Israel unclean foods, but a lot of us don't eat those types of foods anymore. We eat kosher, the same as the house of Judah. Yahshua Mashiach came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yahshua didn't come for goyim, for Gentiles. He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24, it says, But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the lost tribes, the ten tribes of Israel. Also here we find the mitzvot, the commandments from Yahshua HaMashiach, that we must find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. With his death, Yahshua HaMashiach broke the enmity that was between the house of Judah and the house of Israel. He's bringing them together more every day now. Yahshua HaMashiach bought us with the life of His precious blood. Therefore, now many of us understand that the ancient covenant or the Holy Torah, misinterpreted as the law in the Tanakh, is in fact alive. It is valid. It was never destroyed or done away with. Yahshua HaMashiach confirms this in the book of Matthiahu, Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 when he says, do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. And that's exactly what he did. He fulfilled the Torah every day of his life, remaining perfect, remaining free of sin until the very end of his life, becoming the perfect sacrifice, thus destroying the law of sin and death. Because remember, there are in fact two interpretations of the word law in the Tanakh in the Bible. One interpretation refers to the law of sin and death, and the other interpretation refers to the Holy Torah. For more information on the Torah, we advise you to listen to the study titled The Misinterpretation of the Torah, which is also free of charge online at www.joyandpeace.us. All of the study material is always free. If anyone else charges for study material, maybe they forgot to read the part where it says, You receive free, give free. During the Inquisition of the Roman Catholic Church, many Jews who were scattered among the settling lands in Europe, Asia, and many parts of the Old World were forced to convert to the false doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. Many Jews refused this conversion and were tortured and were killed or burned alive. But many Jews accepted this conversion and were forced to change their last name. Although many Jews accepted this conversion from the Roman Catholic Church, most of them were simply forced to keep the Shabbat, the feast, etc. behind closed doors. Many people today are discovering their Jewish ancestry by simply searching into databases online. Our advice, if you haven't already done so, is to rediscover your ancestry. 
Even if you think you might not have Jewish ancestry, you might be surprised at what you will find. Remember, even if you have one single drop of Jewish blood among your ancestry, you make up part of the house of Judah or the house of Israel. Either way, you have a chance right now, for the time being, to become part of Yahweh's people through Yahshua HaMashiach and keeping His Holy Torah. There's something else very important that has to do with the Kohanim or the priest that served in the temple. Only the Levites were allowed to serve in the temple. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 10 verse 14 it reads, For the Levites left their common lands and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons rejected them from serving as priests or Kohanim. The Levites did not flee with Jeroboam. That's why Jeroboam appointed his own elected Kohanim or priests that did not come from Levi. Judah stayed with Jerusalem and so did Benjamin but also part of the Levites. Another question that always comes up is about the word testament, referring to the Old Testament and the New Testament in the Bible, in the Tanakh. The word testament we have found to also be man-made. It is an invention of the human mind because testamentu was a Greek god and we have nothing to do with Greek gods. That is why we now say ancient covenant and new covenant. Testamentu was a Greek god. May Yashua should rebuke him. Well, why does it matter anyway, you might say. Well, let's look up, let's go to the book of Hebrews on chapter 9, verses 16 and 17, where it says, For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, for us, it is not testament, because Yahshua HaMashiach is alive. He lives. Shua means salvation. You can find this in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. His name is not Jesus. It is Yahshua. The name Jesus is incorrect. It was taken out of the Greek god Zeus. The letter J in the alphabet did not exist until about 1500 AD. Before this time, they only used the letter I. In fact, you can find that in many of the original scriptures that existed during the medieval period, they used the word Iezus. Therefore, this is another example of mortal man coming in and placing man-made ideas and changing the Tanakh, the Bible. Yahshua HaMashiach also commanded his disciples to look for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the book of Matthew, on chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, it reads, These twelve Yahshua sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Therefore, as you can see, there is plenty of work yet to be done. He is not just simply asking his disciples. He's commanding them to go out and find these lost sheep. Now ask yourself, do you consider yourself to be a disciple for Yahshua HaMashiach? Then you too must go out and help find these lost sheep of Israel. Now, I want to make a clarification when he speaks of the Samaritans. Does he mean there won't be any sheep there? No, he's saying there will always be sheep among the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles and their idol worship, they must be aware of this. Look out for, for the Gentiles and their idol worship and stay away from these things. But these lost sheep are among them, among the Gentiles, very much like it is today. They're scattered all over the place. That's why they're lost. They have no identity until now, of course. In the ancient covenant, Assyria mixed with Israel to form the Samaritans. That's why they hated the house of Judah and still do. Sakariyahu, also known as John the Baptist, he also prophesied about the Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach. Why am I mentioning this? I am mentioning this because there has always been a remnant of true followers. At this time, the house of Israel was already broken up. In the book of Lucas, chapter 2, verse 36, it says, Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple, but served Yahweh with fastings and prayers night and day. Therefore, she's not from the tribe of Judah, from the house of Judah. She's from the tribe of Asher. As she remained at the temple, there were others who also remained there. John the Baptist's father was from the Levites. 
The point is, there has always been a remnant of true believers from the house of Israel in Jerusalem. In the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 5 it reads, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain Kohanim, a certain priest, named Zacharias, of the division of Abijah. You see, not all of the Levites left with the house of Israel, with Jeroboam, to the mountains. There were Levites who also stayed in Jerusalem. Certainly there are massive amounts of people that are from the house of Israel scattered throughout the world. Countless millions of people. But the Tanakh says that only a remnant will be saved. In the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 27 it says, Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. If you want to be saved, then follow Yahshua HaMashiach. Keep the Torah, keep the Shabbat, keep the Moadim, the feasts. Enter into the covenants, separate yourself from the world, remain in Kedusha and holiness, and you will be part of the remnant. The remnant of the house of Israel is now recognizing that Yahshua is the Mashiach and that the Torah, the Holy Torah, was never abolished. They are returning from the house of Judah and from the house of Israel. Everyone who follows Yahshua Mashiach has the same promises. In the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 it reads, And if you are Mashiachs, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What promise? The promise that was made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh made that promise. Now, there was a time in history where the ten tribes were broken up, and the promise is that once again the descendants, the descendants would take up on that promise of the house of Israel. Because many could say, well, the house of Israel died a long time ago. But the Tanakh goes beyond all this, referring to the descendants of the house of Israel. By the time the letter of James was written, the twelve tribes of Israel had left the Holy Land. This resulted from the war in the year 95 AD. The temple was destroyed by Titus. In the book of James chapter 1 verse 1 it says, James, a bondservant of Yahweh and of Adonai, Yahshua HaMashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, so at this time, the 12 tribes were already scattered abroad. It wasn't just the 10 tribes. Therefore, the tribe of Judah had also sinned. They were waiting for the restoration of Israel. Paul talked about Peter also knew about it, and so did the disciples and the prophets. In the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 7, Paul, Rav Shaul, prophesied about the reunion, about the restoration. On Acts, chapter 26, verse 7, it reads, to this promise are twelve tribes, earnestly seeking Yahweh, night and day, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. As we have said before, by this time the ten tribes of Israel had been broken up, but the tribe of Judah and Benjamin remained in Jerusalem until 95 AD. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6, the disciples ask Yahshua HaMashiach about the restoration of Israel, where it says, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Adonai, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? On verse 7 it says, And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Because remember, he came for the lost sheep of Israel. Many people believe that in 1948, when the state of Israel was founded, that this was a restoration. But it is not referring to this, to a state. The restoration is in the people, the house of Israel, true worship, in the Torah, in the Shabbat, in the return of the Moadim, the feasts, etc. In the book of John, chapter 11, verse 49, Caiaphas, the sumo coin, the high priest Caiaphas, knew about the restoration and prophesied about it. In the book of John, chapter 11, verse 49 through 52, it says, And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest, or sumo coin, that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this he did not say on his own authority, but being sumo coin, or high priest, that year, he prophesied that Yahshua would die for the nation, and not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one the children of Yahweh who were scattered abroad, the twelve tribes. 
In the book of Hebrews on chapter 5 verse 9, it reads, And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. Therefore, true followers of Yahshua HaMashiach obey him. As we have said before, we must do more than to simply believe. In Hebrew, the word faith is pronounced emunah. Emunah means three things, to trust, to believe, and to obey. Without obedience to Yahshua HaMashiach and his Torah, a person does not have true faith, true emunah. The restoration of the house of Israel and the house of Judah is taking place right now. As of December of 2011, there are an estimated 15 million Jews from the house of Judah and the state of Israel that believe that Yahshua is the Mashiach, the Messiah. And that number keeps growing more and more each day. Equally, there are millions of people all over the world from the house of Israel, most notably from the 30,000 plus Christian denominations that are discovering their Jewish ancestry and are also believing that Yahshua is the Mashiach, the Messiah. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, we find the dry bones of Israel. But what are the dry bones? In the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 it reads, The hand of Elohim came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of Adonai and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. On verse 3 it says, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Adonai Yahweh, you know. But who are the dry bones? On verse 11 it says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Certainly the house of Israel will be restored, and those that have been restored and remain in Kedushah will be united with Yahshua HaMashiach in the future. Those that hear and know the truth about the Holy Torah and choose to ignore the restoration and continue following man-made pagan traditions will fall into judgment. Therefore, it is imperative that once we know the truth about the Holy Torah and the restoration, it is imperative that we act quickly in order to stay on track, grow spiritually, and not fall back. In Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 7 and 8 it reads, Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says Adonai, that they shall no longer say, as Yahweh lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. On verse 8, there is something very important. Verse 8 is a key to everything that we have been studying. Verse 8 is a key to understanding the two houses of Israel. Verse 8 says, But as Adonai lives, who brought up and led the descendants, the descendants of the house of Israel from the northern country and from all the countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. In these last days, many Orthodox Jews from the house of Judah are believing that Yahshua is the Mashiach, the Messiah. As a result, many from the house of Israel are also believing the same and entering into the covenants, keeping the Shabbat and keeping the Torah. The glory is only for Yahshua HaMashiach. Whether you are from the house of Judah or the house of Israel, we are all valuable in the eyes of Hashem Yahweh. In the book of Zechariah, there is a very special prophecy that is also taking place right now. In the book of Zechariah, on chapter 8, verse 23, it reads, Thus says the Elohim of hosts, In those days ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that Yahweh is with you. Certainly, every kind of idolatry in the world today is despised by Elohim Yahweh. Money, worldly television, music, sexual relations not in the plan of Elohim. Many people today continue to celebrate pagan feasts, believing that, quote-unquote, God is happy with this. But as we have learned, Hashem Yahweh is not happy with everything that is going on in the world today and everything the world has to offer. I want to make a clarification. In the original scriptures, the word Christians does not appear anywhere. I repeat, in the original scriptures, the word Christians does not appear anywhere. The correct word in Hebrew is Meshichim. Meshichim means followers of Mashiach, of Messiah. There is no doorway for Goyim. There is no door for Goyim, for Gentiles, in the New Jerusalem. 
You can find this in the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 12. There are only doorways for the tribes, the Shabbatim of Israel, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Certainly there are people who do not have Jewish blood, but this doesn't mean that they cannot be saved. Ruth was a Moabite, and she said to Naomi, her mother-in-law, Your Elohim shall be my Elohim, your people shall be my people. Therefore Ruth followed the Holy Torah and was saved. In the book of Ezekiel on chapter 37 verse 2 it reads, Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. The open valley is the world. How can we prove this? If you go to Matthew on chapter 13 verse 38 it says, The field is the world, says Yahshua HaMashiach. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares, the weeds, are the sons of the wicked one. It is very probable that you make a part of the house of Israel. It is prophesied that Israel would return to the arms of the Father. Our advice is that you continue to study Torah and grow spiritually in these last days. There are materials online that you can download for free at www.joyandpeace.us. If this information has helped you to better understand your Bible, your Tanakh, please share it with everyone you know. It will be a great blessing for you. Baruch Hashem Yahweh Sebaot. May Yahweh keep you and bless you in the Shingadol, in the holy name of our Adonai, our Lord, Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen.